University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Like something out of Edgar Allan Poe, the remorseless quarterfinal round continues. But at least by the end of tonight's match, we'll know the first of the four teams through to the semi-final matches in a few weeks' time. Both teams will know that not all hope is lost for the losers, though, who'll get one final chance to qualify. Now, the team from Emmanuel College, Cambridge, are here, having seen off the University of Nottingham in round one and the School of Oriental and African Studies in round two. Then, with another characteristic combination of strong general knowledge and inspired guesswork, their first quarter-final victory was at the expense of Warwick University. With an accumulated score of 570 thus far, let's meet them again. Hello, I'm Tom Hill. I'm from London and I'm reading history. Hello, my name's Leah Ward. I'm originally from Oxfordshire and I'm studying maths. This is their captain. Hello, my name's Bobby Seagull. I'm from East Ham in the London Bar of Newham. I'm studying for a Master's in Education specialising in maths. Hi, I'm Bruno. I'm from Wandsworth in South West London and I'm studying physics. The team from Corpus Christi College, Oxford, had a close match in the first round, winning by 200 points to 175, notched up by Jesus College, Cambridge. The second round was a similar story when they won by 175 to 150 against the reigning champions, Peterhouse, Cambridge. But they pulled off a very convincing win in their first quarterfinal, with 250 points to Bristol University's mere 70. With an accumulated total of 625 points, let's meet the Corpus team again. Hello, I'm Tom Fleet. I'm from Pendoggett in Cornwall and I study English. Hi, I'm Emma Johnson. I'm from North London and I study medicine. And their captain? Hi, I'm Nikhil Venkatesh. I'm from Derby and I study philosophy, politics and economics. Hi, I'm Adam Wright. I'm from Winnish in Berkshire and I'm studying for a DPhil in physics. Right, fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for ten. Which British imperial possession included more than 500 princely states over which the Crown held paramountcy in a form of indirect rule? These states included Cochin, Baroda... Corpus Christi Venkatesh. India. India's correct, yes. <laughs> so you get the first set of bonuses, Corpus Christi. They're on Homer's Odyssey. Firstly, for five points, in Book 12 of the Odyssey, Odysseus navigates the channel between which two mythical figures? Their names appear in a metaphor, meaning to be caught between two equally unpleasant alternatives. Nominate, Nominate Johnson. Skill and Charybdis. Correct, yes. Odysseus later lands on the island of Thrinacia, where, against orders, his men eat the cattle of which deity? As they sail away, Zeus sends a storm in which all but Odysseus perish. Mm. Is it the Cyclops? Sure. Is that a deity? No, Cyclops have sheep, no, not cows. Um, I don't know who would have cows. Uh, Athena. So, uh, Poseidon. Everyone. Uh, Poseidon's really angry in the Odyssey. So he's the sea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hephaestus. I've, he could have cows. I don't know. Take a shot. Hephaestus. No, it was Helios, the sun god. Yeah. The shipwrecked Odysseus is washed up on the island of Ogygia, where he's confined for seven years as the lover of which nymph? Calypso. Calypso. Correct. Ten points for this. Man produces evil as a bee produces honey. These are the words of which Nobel laureate, born in Cornwall in 1911. His novels include Pincher Martin, The Inheritors and Rites of Passage. Emmanuel Seagull. William Golding. Correct. <laughs> Your first bonuses, Emmanuel, are on films by the British director Gurinder Chadha. In each case, name the film from the description. I need the precise title in each case. Firstly, a road movie from 1993 about three generations of Asian women from Birmingham on a day trip to Blackpool. Yeah. East, 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 east. Do we have anything east else? Is no? East is not. It's not, it's good not for really. East is East. No, it's Bargy on the Beach. Ah. Secondly, a 2008 film based on Louise Renison's novels for young adults. It starred Georgia Groom as a teenager from Eastbourne. Isn't it the um, Angus Thorns one? Oh, Angus Thorns and Perfect. Angus Thorns and Perfect. That sounds yeah. like the same. Yeah. George or somebody. Yeah. What's it called? I don't know. What's called. Angus Thorns and Perfect Snogging. Oh, you just nominate Barton Singer. Angus Thorns and Perfect Snogging. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And finally, a 2004 film described as a Bollywood-style update of Jane Austen in which Mrs Bakshi is eager to find Bride suitable husbands for her yeah, four yeah. unmarried daughters. Yeah. Bride and Prejudice. Bride and Prejudice is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Listen carefully, with reference to the book of Exodus, if Locus is eight, Hale is seven, and Flies is four, what is two? Emmanuel Barton Singer. Frogs. Frogs is correct, yes, those are plays. <laughs> this is in the point of Egypt, so you get a set of bonuses, this time having taken the lead Emmanuel College on the number 12. If the function sigma of x is defined as the sum of the positive factors of x, including x itself, what is sigma of 12? Plus 6 plus 4 plus 3. Plus 2. 2. Plus, 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 plus 1. 1. Yeah. So what is it? So that's... 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 22. is 10. 16. 20, um, 28, isn't it? 28. Plus 6, yeah. 28. 28. 28. Correct. 12 is the first abundant number. In other words, the smallest positive integer x for which the sum of its factors, excluding x itself, is greater than x. What is the second abundant number? Could it be 16? Or... 16. Would... 16 would be... No, 16. 60, 60. Is it that high? I don't know. It could, there could be one below. I feel like 60 is abundant. Yeah. But it could be one before it. Should we just go for 60? Well, well, no, but, but Try 20. 16. What, what were we going to say? 28 is a perfect number, so yeah, surely it's... No, it can't be 28. So, so, so It could be 24, but no, no, it isn't 24. 60. 60? 60? Okay. 60? 60? No, it's 18. Oh. Oh. And finally, the totient function phi of x is defined as the number of positive integers not exceeding x that are co-prime to x. What is phi of 12? 5, 7, mm. 9, 10, 11. 5. 5, yeah. 5? No, it's 4. Oh. Right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see an illustration of a type of roulette curve. That is a path traced by a point on one curve rolling along another. For ten points, I want the name of this specific form of curve shown in red. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uh, a cycloid. Correct. <laughs> it was named by Galileo and sometimes called the Helen of geometers because of the arguments it caused between 17th century mathematicians. Your picture bonuses are three more significant types of roulette curve. I want the specific name of each. Again, you're looking for the red curve. Firstly, for five. So cycloids, Ooh. conchoids, I don't, I don't know. ellipsoids. No, no, no. Uh, do you know what this is? No. No. Do we know? Con Trianguloid. Trianguloid. Well, it's a deltoid or oh, tricuspoid. Delta, 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 delta. Secondly. Oh, um. What's that? So it's, an it's like a. I guess it's a speed or something. Yeah. something like, no, ooh, um, um, so it's coming off an X squared type curve. What are going to be? Cuspid. 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 No, it's a track tricks. Track tricks. And finally... Is that a, con is that a conchoid? Is no. it a cardioid? Yeah, cardioid. 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 Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> Give both the regnal name and number that link the following. The early 12th century King of Scotland nicknamed the Fierce, the King of Yugoslavia assassinated in France in 1934, and the Russian Tsar, who was an adversary of Napoleon I. Emmanuel Hill. Alexander I. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the Syrian Queen Zenobia. Following the death of her husband, Odenathus, in about 267, Zenobia declared herself queen of which Roman colony and modern-day Syrian city? Aleppo? Uh, Tripoli? Tripoli is not Tripoli. Is no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Aleppo, Syria. Oh, Syria. Uh, Damascus, Homs. I, I don't know. Try Aleppo. That's, Aleppo. That's Aleppo. No, it's Palmyra. Oh yeah. my God. Secondly, after declaring her independence from Rome, Zenobia seized Egypt and much of Asia Minor before her armies were defeated at Antioch by which Roman emperor? Hmm. Wait. So what, what are we looking at? Antioch. I mean, Antioch. if it's what period? It's just late. Wait, Diocletian, maybe? Diocletian, 300, was around 300. Right period, was it, Diocletian was 300 AD. Okay, okay, yeah. Diocletian? No, it was Aurelian. Oh. And finally, concerning the rivalry between the Emperor Aurelian and the Persian Prince Arsacchi for the love of Zenobia, 
Aurelian in Palmyra is an opera of 1813 by which Italian composer? It can't be Verdi, 1813. Donizetti, Don probably. That's is. the right period. Yeah. Benin does it, yeah. Donizetti? No, it's Rossini. Ten oh. points for this. In legislation, what ten letter term describes the group of diseases such as anthrax, botulism, and malaria that must be reported to local public health authorities if suspected or diagnosed? Corpus Christi Wright. Contagious. Emmanuel Seagull. Infectious. No, it's notifiable. Ten points for this. With different spellings, what bird links a gender equality charter for British higher education institutions? A 90... Corpus Christi Venkatesh. Swan. Swan is correct, yes. <laughs> OK, Corpus, these bonuses are on psychology. For what do the letters ND stand when denoting the concept that a person's name may influence their choice of job or other path in life? A cited example is that men called Raymond are more likely to be radiologists than dermatologists. Nominative determinism. Correct. Which British magazine coined that term, nominative determinism, in 1994, citing a book on polar exploration by Daniel Snowman and a scholarly article on incontinence by the urologist J.W. Splatt and D. Weedon? <laughs> is that British? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. New scientist? Correct. In a 2015 article, which novelist noted that his surname was a contraction of sea wolf? And, quote, nothing to do with egotism at all, yet the name has still made its mark on me, such that I find similar ones endlessly amusing. Will Self. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> Which two US biologists give their surnames to an experiment of 1957 that's been called the most beautiful experiment in biology? It showed that DNA is replicated semi-conservatively. Emmanuel Seagull. Um, Yuri Miller? Nope. Anyone like to buzz from Corpus Christi? Corpus Christi Venkatesh. Thompson and Smith. Oh, no, it's Messelson and Stahl. So, ten points at stake for this. Which town came second to Cardiff in a 1954 poll to decide the capital of Wales? It was once represented in Parliament by David Lloyd George, and in 1969 its castle was the scene of the investiture of the Prince of Wales. Corpus Christi Wright. Pembroke. No. Emmanuel Hill. Carnarvon. Carnarvon is right, yes. <laughs> You've got a set of bonuses this time, Emmanuel College, on international organisations. Firstly, for five points, what year saw the establishment of the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation with 12 founding members? You can have a year either way. I think it's 1498. 49? Yeah. 1949? Correct. In addition to Malta and Cyprus, four countries are members of the European Union but are not members of NATO. Name three of them. European Union but not NATO. Czech Republic and Czech Slovakia. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Southern, Southern countries. Southern maybe. countries. Uh, maybe like Croatia. Greece. Yeah, Cro yeah. Croatia, I imagine. Croatia and... Greece, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Croatia and Greece. No, I wanted you to name three of them. Uh, it was there, Austria, Ireland, Finland and Sweden. Okay. And finally, in addition to the USA, Canada and Turkey, three countries are members of NATO, but not of the European Union. Name two of the three. NATO, but not... Um, so who's part is, of NATO? Is India part of NATO? No, no, I don't think so. They're all around the Atlantic. Aren't yeah, of course. Um, I, don't, I can't think of any countries. Um, Iceland. Iceland. Iceland and... Um, and Norway is not the EU. Norway, Iceland, and Norway. Norway. Was it just two? That you yeah, I think it was two. So. Iceland and Norway. Yes, the third one is Albania. <laughs> right, it's time now to take a music round. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of music by an Austrian composer. Ten points if you can identify that composer. Emmanuel Seagal. Schoenberg. No, you can hear a little more Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi Venkatesh. Johann Strauss. No, it's Mahler. That's the farewell from the Song of the Earth. So music bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points for this starter question. Fingers on the buzzers. First published in 1917, soon after the author's death at the Battle of Arras, 
Which 16-line poem was inspired by the poet's own diary entry describing a train journey on a... Corpus Christi Johnson. In Flanders Fields? Nope. You lose five points. Describing a train journey on a summer's day. It takes its name from a village and former railway station in Gloucestershire. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Um, Adelstrop. Adelstrop is correct, yes. <laughs> now, if your music starter, which nobody got, we heard Kathleen Ferrier, the famous contralto, a year before her death in 1953. Your music bonuses are three more of her notable recordings. Five points in each case if you can give me the composer of the work. Firstly, for five, the German composer of this work. It's got that fugue feeling, doesn't it? What's Sorry? What's Orphan and Richard? Gluck. Do they say German? Yeah, German. Bach sounds plausible. Yeah. They say German. They say German, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bach. That's correct, it was Bach. It was the Angus Day from the massive B minor. Secondly. This is Orphan and Richard. Is the original of your share? What is life? Oh, so does he, does he just want the name of the... And the original of your... Um, Monteverdi. Monteverdi? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. OK. Monteverdi? No, it was Gluck. It was Orpheus oh, in oh, Eurydice. Sorry. And sorry. finally... I wasn't 100% I'm just going to Maybe. I don't know. Mozart's Austrian. Is it German or what what are they? Haydn. Mozart. It's not a good one. I wouldn't. Haydn. 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 Uh, we'll go for Haydn. No, that was Purcell. That was from the Fairy Queen. Ten uh, points for this. Answer as soon as your name is called. The sum of the fractions one half plus one sixth plus one twenty first is equivalent to how many sevenths? Corpus Christi Venkatesh. Five sevens. Correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on fiction. Who wrote the 1976 novel The Alteration? It assumes that the Reformation did not take place and opens with Himmler and Beria hearing the voice of the choir boy, Hubert Anvil, at the laying to rest of King Stephen III of England. <sighs> No, 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 I do. Try Robert Harris. Mm. This alternative history. Harris? No, it was Kingsley Amos. Secondly, the eccentric English writer Frederick Rolfe was the author in 1904 of which novel its protagonist, a thinly veiled self portrait, unexpectedly becomes Pope? I feel like they wouldn't give us the work. Okay. The Bishop of Rome. No, it's Hadrian the Seventh. And finally, in Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy, the centre of the Church's authority lies not in Rome but in Geneva, a result of the election as Pope of which historical figure of the Reformation who died there in 1564. Who goes Zwingli? Oh, Zwingli? No, it was Calvin. Ten points for this. In Edward II, which historical figure did Christopher Marlowe describe as that sly, inveigling French... Emmanuel Hill. Here's Gaveston. Correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses, Emmanuel, are on political history. Who became Chancellor of the Exchequer in 1964 and was later Home Secretary, Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister? The only politician to have held... The four great offices of state. Is it Heath? Or Heath? Heath, yeah. Heath. Heath. Not Macmillan? Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heath, okay. Heath? No, it was Jim Callaghan. Uh. Which Liberal politician was Home Secretary from 1915 to 16? He was later Foreign Secretary and Chancellor of the Exchequer, becoming Lord Chancellor in 1940. I don't have any names. Um, Just Chancellor. Say again? 
But is it too early for pot? Yeah, it's too early. Could be a little bit early, but I don't know. Yeah, no, it is too early. Beverage? <laughs> Beverage? No, Sir John Simon. Oh. And finally, name either of the two 20th century Conservative politicians who, before becoming Prime Minister, served successively as Foreign Secretary and Chancellor. So, so now, we, now it could be Ted Hughes. Ted Hughes, maybe? Trump. Yeah, I'll go for that. And, and we, but we need two. We need two Ted so. Heath. No, I said either. Either. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ted Heath? No, it wasn't. It was Macmillan and Major. Ten points for this, fingers on the buzzers. Postulated in 1951 by Ludwig Biermann and named in 1959 by Eugene Parker, what phenomenon consists of magnetised plasma that moves past the Earth at a mean velocity of roughly 400 kilometres per second? Emmanuel Barton Singer. Solar wind. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Emmanuel, are on geography. In each case, name the largest country in terms of land area whose short English name begins with the following letters. For example, A is Australia. Okay. Firstly, one and a half times the size of the UK, what is the largest country whose name begins with the letter G for golf? G. Okay, so Georgia, Georgia, Germany... Germany's a bit Germany. bigger Germany. than Germany. 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 But, no, no, we should, should we just... Does, we we should just think for a second. second. Germany, um, Georgia... Uh, there's a lot of African... There's Guinea... Guinea. Guinea-Bissau, Guyana, yeah, smaller, yeah, um, Ghana, Ghana. I think it is going to be Germany. Yeah. Yes, Germany. Germany. It is Germany. Yes. Good. Second, slightly larger than Germany. What is the largest country that begins with the letter J for Juliet? Is it because of Japan? Okay. Uh, um, J. Let's have a look. And is there any even Africa? There's no one South America. Africa. Is it Japan? Mm. No, Japan's not big. Um, J. J. I would have thought Japan's smaller than Germany. Yeah, I can't think of any. There must be some, there must be some African countries with G. <laughs> That's the 54, though. I can't think of any of them right now. Uh, uh, no. I think we'd better have it, please. J Japan? It is Japan. Oh, sorry. Finally, more than three times the size of Japan, what is the largest country whose name begins with the letter P for Papa? P. Peru is quite big. Peru. Pakistan? Yeah. Poland. Oh, Pakistan. 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 Pakistan is big. Is that big? Yeah, big? yeah. I think it's going to be Pakistan. Yeah. yeah. There's nowhere else? Anywhere else? Yeah, Pakistan makes sense. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no. <let's> <laughs> Pakistan? No, Peru is bigger than oh. Pakistan. <laughs> right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a painting. For ten points, I simply want the name of the artist, please. Emmanuel Seagull. Vermeer. It is Vermeer, yes. That was his The Art of Painting, depicting an artist in his studio. Your bonuses are three more paintings of atelier scenes, which include the artist's self-portrait. Five points for each artist you can identify. Firstly... Oh, this could be American. Is it, like, Singer Sergeant? Like, he just sort of... Because it looks like a sort of variation of, like... Mm, I don't know. It's all the one that knows about okay. art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's American. Oh, Whistler sounds good, actually. Do you think it looks good? Whistler yeah, sounds a bit better. A bit like skirt, yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah. Whistler? Whistler is correct. Yeah, well done, that's a good shout. Secondly. Oh, this is Corbet. Okay. Gustav Corbet. Any advances? Say it. No. Say it. Okay. Gustav Corbet. Correct. And finally. Oh, this looks like Lucian Freud. Yeah. And it, I mean, probably... it actually looks like him as well. It does like him as well. Okay. It's Lucian Freud. It is Lucian Freud, yes. <laughs> Right, fingers on the buzzers, ten points for this. Of persons one would wish to have seen and on the pleasure of hating... Corpus Christi Venkatesh. Montaigne. No, you lose five points. Are essays by which English writer? His most famous books, The Plain Speaker and Table Talk, were both published in the 1820s. You may not confer, one of you may buzz. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Disraeli. No, it was William Hazlitt. Ten points for this, then. Bill Woodfull and Douglas Jardine were the opposing captains in an Ashes series... Corpus Christi Venkatesh. The Bodyline series. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Corpus Christi, are on contemporary African-American literature. Firstly, which journalist for The Atlantic magazine wrote the award-winning memoir Between the World and Me, first published in 2015, in the form of a series of letters to his teenage son. No. 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 Gary Young? 
No, it was Tennessee Coates. Oh, yeah. Secondly, which Jamaican-born US poet won the 2015 Forward Prize for Best Collection for Citizen, an American lyric? No, no, we don't know. That was Claudia Rankine. And finally, God Help the Child is a novel of 2015 by which Nobel laureate who was born Chloe Anthony Wofford? Walker? Seven, Come on, let's have it. Uh, Walker? No, that was Toni Morrison. There are about three <laughs> minutes to go and ten points for this. What four letters begin words meaning a genus of moths of the Crambidae family, the family of RNA viruses that includes the Ebola virus and a paper-thin translucent form of pastry? Emmanuel Seagull. Philo? That's correct, F-I-L-O. Right, these bonuses are on the solar system, Emmanuel. Born in Hanover in 1738, which astronomer is commemorated in the names of prominent craters on Saturn's moon Mimas and Earth's moon? Uh, astronomers... Yeah, there's a bit in it. The cap was Herschel, but... Uh, could be Herschel, Herschel, was, Herschel was British. No. Oh, did, what, what nationality German. did he say? German. Well, Herschel... Born in Hanover. But he could be German. Did anyone else? No, okay. Herschel? Herschel is correct, yes. OK. Discovered in the 1990s by the use of radar from orbit, Mead is an impact crater named after the anthropologist Margaret Mead on which planet of the solar system? Oh. It's just a guess, isn't it? Uh, so it's got a, so it's with got a rocky, with a, rocky with body. A crater. It's got to have, like, a rocky surface, like... Mercury. Mercury, Mercury. Yeah, Mars, Mercury. Mars, Mercury, Mars, Mercury. It's just a guess. Mercury. No, it's on Venus. Uh, About 90 kilometres in diameter and containing striking bright spots, the Okato crater was discovered in 2015 on which body of the solar system? Body, so it might not be a planet. Could it be... Series? 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 In 2015, yeah. I think they found that. Series? Series? It couldn't be the sun, could it? Is that yeah, Wait, so it's it's an impact crater on the sun. No, be a bit crazy. No, that would, no. <laughs> series? 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 Series is right. Ten points for this. The name Khorasan appears in the names of three provinces of which present-day country? Its other provinces include Golestan, Kerman and Zanjan. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uzbekistan? No, anyone like to buzz from Corpus quickly? Corpus Christi Venkatesh. China? No, it's Iran. And at the gong, Corpus Christi, Oxford have 55, but Emmanuel College Cambridge have 170. Well, bad luck, Corpus. Uh, you're going to have to play again, I think, if you want to get through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to you, Emmanuel. You will go through to the semi-finals for sure, and we'll be seeing you again in a few weeks' time. We'll you look are. forward to that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and well done. I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match, but until then, it's goodbye from Corpus Christi College, Oxford. Goodbye. Bye. It's goodbye from Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> Starting now, over on BBC One, the disturbing reality of life behind bars as Panorama goes into prison undercover. And next here on BBC Two, rustling up costumes for carnival. Ooh, which shoulder piece in an island parish, Anguilla? <laughs>